Hello, this is Dean Rader, and welcome to another episode of Poems That Changed Me. This is a poem that changed so many things for me, and I am very excited to be talking about it today. It's by the great American poet Terence Hayes, and the poem is called Snow for Wallace Stevens from his phenomenal book, Lighthead. A quick note about my reading of the poem. In the poem, Hayes uses a racial epithet that he samples from a poem by Wallace Stevens in which that word appears in the title. People who know Stevens and Hayes will know the poem I'm referring to. I am not going to say that word. It appears in the poem, and so that will have to do. Snow for Wallace Stevens by Terence Hayes. No one living a snowed-in life can sleep without a blindfold. Light is the lion that comes down to drink. I know tink and tank and tunk and tunk tunk hold nearly the same sound as a bottle. Drink and drank and drunk and drunk drunk. Light is the lion that comes down. This song is for the wise man who avenges by building his city in snow for his decorations in a cemetery. How, with pipes of winter lining his cognition, does someone learn to bring ascends to its knees. Who is not more than his limitations? Who is not the blood in a wine barrel and the wine as well? I too, having lost faith in language, have placed my faith in language. Thus, I have a capacity for love without forgiveness. This song is for my foe the clean-shaven, gray-suited, gray patron of Hartford, the emperor of whiteness, blue as a body made of snow. Okay, I wanna talk about three things. I'm gonna limit, <laughs> limit my comments to three ways this poem changed me. First, it is a masterclass on how a poet stitches together lines from a different poet into his own poem. I've actually put hot links in the poem so that you can follow uh, the specific Stevens poems that Hayes references. A glass of water from which the, lion, the line, light is a line that comes down to drink, derives. Gorgeous line. Uh, a high-toned old Christian woman. Of course, the main poem that Hayes is interacting with like decorations in a cemetery. And then there is a recurring motif of snow that clearly is referencing Stevens's perhaps most famous poem, The Snowman. So one of the things I really love about this poem is how uh, there is this uh, interlaced uh, sort of back and forth call and response between Hayes and Stevens here. Two, this poem is also a phenomenal example of proportionality. One of the things I tell my students all the time is that poems that, that, are, that are lit, that, that burn, that succeed, are poems that are firing on a number of different cylinders. They're poems that are sort of striking a chord, a literal chord, hitting a bunch of different notes at once, not just the same monotone note being tapped out. Here, Hayes does a phenomenal job of moving from statement to a lyrical line to another series of statements, to questions, to almost a kind of confession, to back, back to another series of statements. In there, he also sort of mixes up different syntaxes, rhetorical gestures, these small pivots. When he quotes the unbelievably gorgeous line by Stevens, light is the lion that comes down to drink, that iambic moment gets repeated later on in the poem, who is not the blood in a wine barrel and the wine as well, right? That monosyllabic uh, intensity. Um, so if you are looking for a poem, a relatively short poem that does a lot uh, linguistically and stylistically and syntactically, this is a great model. But most importantly, of course, this poem is one of the best poems I know of that really gets at the unbelievably difficult tension involved in 
admiring the work of a poet whose political beliefs you find abhorrent. Clearly, Hayes admires some elements of Stephen's work. His ability with a line is really like no other American poets. When Hayes asks, how, with pipes of winter lining his cognition, does someone learn to bring a sentence to its knees? To me, he's asking, how is someone who thinks so clearly about the human condition, who is so good with language, who is so gifted at chronicling and articulating what it means to be human, how can that person have such backward, abhorrent, unjustifiable views about race? How is someone who is so forward-thinking as a poet be so backward-thinking as a human? And I think for many of us who admire so much of Stevens's work, um, this poem in particular and some of the other things he's written in his letters that scholars like uh, Alden Nielsen have brought to light, uh, it just kind of breaks our hearts because I often look to Stevens in uh, difficult moments and those moments of me turning to him for some sort of solace are always undercut by his absolutely disgusting views on race. And this is something that we have to reckon with in many of the poems and poets that um, we perhaps grew up loving, that perhaps brought us to poetry in the first place. Hayes's ability to balance these competing forces is what gives this poem its real tension. I actually wrote about this poem uh, in a long piece for the Academy of American Poets, and I asked uh, Terence what he thought uh, about Stevens. Uh, I'll include a link to it here below the video, and you're welcome to go uh, check that out. But this poem uh, changed how I thought about uh, how poets engage with complicated texts. Hayes doesn't give us any answers, um, but he certainly lets us know um, his deep, deep, deep anger, and perhaps even worse, his deep disappointment in Stevens. The result, of course, is an unbelievable poem that changed so many things for me.